Ohayou gozaimasu. Good morning from Kamakura, Japan. We just made it into the city yesterday from a Ryokan up in Hakone, and we now have 48 hours to do all the best things here in Kamakura. Today, we'll actually be meeting up with two fellow artists, Jeff and Nina, who we actually went to school with. They were one year below us, and what's really awesome is they're both present at our little backyard wedding. Jeff was the wonderful photographer that took all those gorgeous film photos. And what's really cool is Nina is a local to Kamakura. So we'll be shown around by someone who lives here in the city. And we're gonna go and meet up with them now, but we are just so thrilled because we rarely get to meet up with anyone while we're on the road. <laughs> So today is a bit of a windy day in the city, but it should still be a good one. Our plan is to see all of the iconic things to see here in Kamakura. And then tomorrow, we're actually planning on taking a train over to another island that is close by. Hi. Good to see you. To see you. How are you guys doing? Good, doing well. <laughs> We are starting off our day with some street eats. We were actually waiting in line at another restaurant, but it's just so bustling crazy. And we got so many people lined up that we had to get something to hold us over. Yeah. So I want to show you what we got. It's like a skewer with everything that Stan had to offer. <laughs> so yeah. we're kind of trying everything, but it looks like there's some- uh, Giant shumai. Yeah, giant shumai, some soup dumplings, a bao of some sort. And like a scallion pancake yeah, or something. Yeah, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna drizzle the sauce on. about an hour's long wait. We finally made it in here and we all have a huge plate of curry in front of us. As you can see, there's white rice on the bottom. The curry drizzles on top and it has a poached egg as well as the most green onion I've ever seen sprinkled on top of a curry. So we're gonna dig in. I believe I got mild and you got no normal spiciness. So you get to choose your spiciness here, but it looks really good. We're obviously starving, so let's eat. We also got a ginger tea, or oh, ginger yes. soda. Yes, we did. Oh, and another thing, it comes with little sides of veggies, like cucumbers and carrots. So now that we are nice and full of curry, we are heading over to one of the most famous shrines here in Kamakura. There's a lot of people, I believe, also walking over there, so I'm excited to see what it's like. Yeah, it's a 19th century Shinto shrine. Yes. that we just came from, but we are currently walking along a path that's completely lined with cherry blossom trees. And unfortunately, we aren't here during the spring, but I can imagine how gorgeous this path must be when they are in full bloom. Yeah, it's only like one month away. Yeah, oh. missed it by so close. Yeah. But I mean, coming here during the cherry blossom season was definitely a little pricey, so yeah. decided to come in the winter instead. <laughs> just made it to one of the most iconic spots here in Kamakura. This is the Big Buddha, and the last Big Buddha that we saw was over in Hong Kong, which might have been a little bit bigger. But what I like about this Buddha is that, honestly, all of the shrines and temples here in Japan have such an incredible landscaping and connection with nature that you don't really see in other countries around the world as much. Um, it's something that I've really enjoyed, and I think it really connects with a lot of aspects of the Japanese culture and the way that they treat their uh, food and just their surroundings in general. So I'm really gonna miss that from our trip here in Japan. 
and it's something that I hope that we can take back to the apricot house is weaving in this connection with nature in some way. We were just talking with our very kind tour guide, Nina, and she was actually telling us that this is from 1200. So it's like 800 years old. Also, Kamakura used to be the capital of Japan. So there are a lot of temples that are from that period. It was called the Kamakura period 800 years ago. After walking around the city for about 30 minutes, following the train tracks, which was really cool to see, we made it to the Black Sand Beach. <laughs> it's very unexpected. Yeah. And the sunset is very beautiful, and but unique in right. its own way tonight. Yeah, it's like just barely coming through the clouds, but it is hitting the water, making it a little bit orange and just golden. Yeah. And what I really love is just watching the surfers who are just having a great evening yeah. out on the waves but this is just extremely relaxing and I love hearing um, the water rushing up against the shore. When we say black sand, this is like black. black, black. It's like soil. Yeah, it's beautiful, honestly. So we could have chosen a cleaner vending machine, but I've decided to get a milk tea. So I think one of the coolest things about the vending machines here in Japan is that they actually have hot drinks as well as cold drinks. It's so simple, but it's so, so nice in the winter. All right, yeah. let's do it. A milk tea. Yes, and it's hot. hot. Warm. And it's not too hot, it's perfectly warm. For dinner this evening, we decided to part ways with Jeff and Nina, and we actually went into one of their grocery stores where the entire first floor is like specifically for takeaway food. Yeah, like everything. So they have sushi, they have fried chicken, udon, gyoza, yeah, all of it. All sorts of things. So of course we had to get our fill of sashimi. We also got some nigiri sushi, some tonkatsu, edamame, udon, and gyoza. So we have a pretty big feast and we'll probably start with the sushi and sashimi and then see if we can make our way to the things that aren't raw. <laughs> Indoshima, but as we were taking the train, looking out at the water, we saw that there's this huge flea market. So Jeff and Nina actually said that they've been wanting to go to this flea market because it only happens on Sundays, and we're here, and it honestly has such an incredible collection of the coolest vintage clothing, flowers, candles, honestly anything you could imagine. And it's like, it's good stuff and good prices, and to top it all off, first off, it's a beautiful day, but you can see Mount Fuji in the distance, and it's just so beautiful, right by the ocean. So yeah, it's a good little side trip.
Yeah, I like that one. Ooh, <laughs> nice glasses. Yeah, and I got the hat. Players, please with your purchase. Yeah, I never get sunglasses that actually fit my face because it's so small compared to, I guess, US sizes. So this was like a musket. <laughs> to Inoshima Island and there's so many locals out and about today. It's a bustling Sunday so I'm just coming up the stairs. There was a long line for people to pray at the shrine. It's just really been fun people watching throughout the entire day. But I wanted to note something that Jeff had actually mentioned to us uh, while we were eating a meal together and it's kind of talking about how as Americans when we watch anime or Japanese animation we sometimes think like wow these Japanese artists and creators have such a way of um, illustrating uh, trees or architecture or people but once you get here in Japan you realize that's just how everything looks like the water is just sparkling and glistening in such a magical way and the trees really do curve and arch in such an organic manner that you don't see in the States and I just thought it was really really awesome to be able to witness all of these um, animations that we grew up watching in real life. Another thing I just want to mention is like the steam that comes out of shops. It's just so whimsical and I think that is the perfect word to describe our time here in Japan just looking all around. There's so much whimsy and so much joy and beauty to be found. We have made it to the top of Inoshima Island. And behind me is a sea candle. This one is actually an observation deck as well, and it was built back in 2003. But the views up on this island are incredible. I don't think we're gonna be going up there just because it costs money, and the views from right here are just fine. So I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but today is sadly our final day in Japan because we fly out tomorrow. And I think Japan is telling us that we need to come back because all of the cherry blossoms here, not all of them, but there are three trees that are all blooming early just for us. <laughs> sure, just for us. Just for us. <laughs> but it is um, just really exciting to be able to see it in real mm -hmm. life, especially with the sun shining through the branches. It is just such a gorgeous spray of pink. After lots and lots of walking today, we have worked up an appetite and we have some takoyaki, which we've been meaning to try our whole time here in Japan, but they're essentially octopus balls. And we see so many locals eating them, but we actually haven't been able to try it. So today is the day on our very last day. Honestly, your last chance. Oh yeah, I also wanted to say we uh, we got a nice little pork bun. <laughs> yeah, I saw Jeff and Rina with them and I got jealous. <laughs> they seem to be enjoying it, so. This looks like the kind of food that might need a wet wipe. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I like the octopus in the middle. Yeah, it's definitely not what I expected it to taste like. I thought it'd be more like a bread, but it's like octopus wraps in like a... In a batter. Yeah, wrapped in a batter. Very um, moist, I'd say. Mm -hmm.
after a spectacular sunset on the island of Inoshima, we've taken the train back to Kamakura and we are off to a ramen restaurant for our final meal with Jeff and Nina yeah. on our final night in Japan. I had a great nap. Yeah, Claire was snoozing on me. The train. <laughs> I feel like I've only stayed awake 50% of the time on the trains here in Japan. Yeah, they're, they're like just perfect. napping zones. Yeah, yeah. amazing. <laughs> well, we started our time here in Japan with a bowl of ramen as our first meal. So it only made sense that we end our time here with ramen as well. It was absolutely delicious. And after dinner, we actually came back to our Airbnb with Jeff and Nina. We just sat and talked and talked for hours. And it was really fun talking to people who knew us in a different chapter of our lives from art school and who are also just like-minded in many different ways. So it's been an amazing 48 hours, not only exploring Kamakura, but spending time Time with other creatives but oh, it's so sad that it's our last day here in Japan tomorrow we're actually flying all the way back to Tennessee and that's where we're gonna be staying for the next little while until our next big trip but if you would like to follow along as we travel to 50 countries around the world hit subscribe and as always a really big thank you to our patreon family for cheering us on through it all and with all that said we'll catch you all next time bye